Chapter Reincarnation The body is temporary, but the soul is eternal. You are your consciousness, and consciousness is a property of your soul. As your soul is immortal, you are immortal too. The soul connects with the body and makes it conscious. Sometimes the body can be alive but without soul and without consciousness. This would be alive bodies in coma or people with amnesia. Some people with Alzheimer's and loss of memory and interest to life. They're still alive. They can do basic functions, but they, they, their consciousness is, is, uh, has left the body. As you communicate with them, you realize the soul is not there. It can return for a short while, but, but then it would live again because the life is not interested or the soul cannot connect to the body completely. The soul is multidimensional. It is much bigger, much more complex than the body. The body cannot contain the whole soul. The body only connects to, to a much bigger soul. The soul uses this life and this world to get the experience and to change the world. The life is short and the experience obtains, obtained in the life and the personality developed in the life remains with the soul and is immortal. The body dies but the personality remains and the memories of this personality remain. The life is short and this is why the immortal soul incarnates in many bodies many times. In every new incarnation the soul gives the body its character. This is why even identical twins often have very different characters because even the identical twins would have different souls. On the other hand, different incarnations of, di of the same soul uh, have similar characters. Yet with, with every new life, with every new incarnation, a new uh, shape, the character develops into a new shape and a new personality is developed. The personality are somewhat si these personalities are somewhat similar, but because life circumstances are different, each personality is somewhat different. Because every time it's a new period in history, the new personality is somewhat different. So every new incarnation develops a new personality. And these personalities remain forever. They are eternal. The process of incarnation starts from the soul choosing the father and the mother. The soul chooses the genetics. For example, it's much easier for a soul of a human to incarnate in, an, in a human than in other species. And for example, the souls of Pleiadians, when they incarnate in humans, they would choose the humans with Pleiadian um, bloodlines. From a human perspective, from the point of view of human biology, the recombination of parents' DNA is random. A child always gets 50% of mother's DNA and 50% of father's DNA at random. But from the soul's perspective, that these random events are in full control of the soul. And it can pick and choose which genes it wants to receive from the father and which genes it wants to receive from the mother. Usually it is the soul of the future, of the ch of the future child which is responsible for the love that parents uh, experience to each other. The soul wants to incarnate and it fires up the love of the parents. And it is the child who makes the parents love each other as it grows up. That is the energy of the soul that uh, energizes the love in a, in, a, in a family. This is one of the reasons uh, when, uh, for many families when the children grow up and they don't require the, the support of the parents, the love and the sexual love in the family fades away. So often the parents have to find a new way to love each other and a new way to cooperate and be friends to each other. So the soul chooses the parents before the conception. When the parents meet, that's when the soul already looks at them and energizes their love. It guides them towards each other and helps them in their problems. It helps them to fall in love. The conception is a very special process. The sex and the energy is very special and it requires both parents ideally to be in orgasm and experience uh, 
the synchronization of the electric uh, vibration. The electric oscillations in the nerves of the body synchronize and pump the energy into this um, oscillation as in, la in the laser. So there is accumulation of the energy which is then focused inside to the to once to, to the to the uterus of the mother where the brain and the spine of the mother creates um, the structure amplifying the uh, electric oscillation and the result the energy is focused in the uterus and creates a transdimensional vortex which serves as a spark for the new life this spark this vortex allows the soul to connect to this reality as the embryo grows from one cell to two to four and so on there is more place for the soul to connect to their to this reality and it is done primarily through the dna and through the neurons which form in the embryo as the body develops the soul connects to the reality more and more during the life the uh, the human experiences ups and down of the soul development. Ups are happy times and downs are the depression. This happens to all humans and is normal. These cycles of development are synchronized with the planets and are guided by the planet. Also they are guided by the biological rhythms and by the soul beats, the soul rhythm. These cycles are of different lengths and usually lasting for weeks and months. As a human develops and grows, not only the physical body develops, uh, the human also develops uh, so-called astral body in other dimensions, astral bodies, a series of bodies. They have different names and functions, usually are mentioned etheric body, astral body, emotional body, mental body, and several more. The, each of them has different functions. Etheric body is responsible for uh, health, emotional body for emotions, mental body for thinking, astral body for connection to astral realms, and there are several bodies, several astral bodies specially designed for the connection of different levels of God consciousness. One of them is called Atman body. Usually after a human uh, recovers after a depression, a new portion of the soul is connected to him. So. It is a process of continuous growth and it goes in cycles. Like a tree goes in, uh, grows in cycles and you can see the circles on the, on the wood. So the human soul also reconnects to the, to the body through cycles. So it is not unusual for a human to get new qualities of the personality after a depression. And sometimes the change is even more radical when uh, a new nature, new qualities are much more pronounced. As you go through the day, you accumulate experiences and in the night, during the night sleep, you upload your uh, experiences to the soul. In exchange, you receive the answers to your questions. Uh, you, some of your problems are solved outside of your mind, in the outside world. And also the soul during the sleep helps you to regenerate your physical body. It is a symbiosis, it's a mutually beneficial exchange between the physical body and the soul. As the body dies, the soul gradually disconnects from the body. A normal peaceful death is helpful for, uh, for the proper transfer of the life experiences to the soul. If the body dies in a violent death and is damaged, that damage could be inherited in the next incarnation. It is called past life trauma. Some people remember their past lives. Usually ch children remember their past lives much better and then they forget their past lives as they, as they age and become adults, as they grow up and become adults. After the death of the body, the soul, the personality returns to returns home to a higher dimension which is usually called discarnate world this world is located in the fifth dimension seventh dimension and higher dimensions there the soul is healed uh, from the trauma of the life and death of the body the personality meets its um, friends in the spirit world uh, its past it's deceased friends and relatives 
and relatives and past life friends and relatives it undergoes it undergoes a life review with teachers and guides this, this review happens in a life in the classroom settings and the personality has an opportunity to see the events of the past life not only from its own perspective but also from a perspective of other people involved in the events also there is an opportunity to replay different decisions and see how these decisions would affect other people so now when you make the decisions understand that it doesn't really matter which decision you make it matters that you experience the process of making a choice and in the past life review later you will be able to replay all these decisions in any way you like and and see the consequences of these decisions of every decision um, that can be made so in the life review you will be able to uh, see the con consequences of the alternative decision that you could make so in the life review you could take an alternative decision and see what, ha what, what will happen the discarnate world is a happy place it is a place where the soul comes home what is the death of the body and what is the time of the death of the body here is the time of the birth over there so the soul every time the soul comes back the personality comes back it is like a birth and it is a celebration when a friend dies it is all right to remember them with love but it is always wise but it is also wise to let them go because too much grief and too much attachment prevents the soul from returning home and continuing its continuing its work there you can always connect to a died friend you can always meditate and invite them for a visit and you can always pray and send um, your thoughts to them mm -hmm. um, the time and space are different in the discarnate world so they they can always hear you and they can always communicate if you don't hear them if they don't appear to you it's only because you are not in a proper state of receptivity so coming to the state where you can notice them allows you to receive the, the information from them it is only your vibration your perception your blockages which define whether you're capable of hearing them seeing them because they, they are always present and they're always available for the communication the personality of the person the soul receives much assistance uh, in the spirit world from the friends and instructors the life there is is very structured uh, much of it uh, is celebration and communication and groups and some of it is a classroom instruction and some of it is personal homework in a, an academic setting uh, some some souls remain in discarnate world for a long time and some return to the incarnations fast it really depends on the uh, the development of the soul and uh, its own choices also there is an advisory committee which uh, advises the soul in which direction to move uh, after the soul finishes the um, healing process and the life review it can incarnate again or it can become a spirit guide when the soul goes into a next incarnation it invites it, its friends to serve as its, as its spirit guides each human has uh, several spirit guides some of them are um, discarnate human spirits and some of them uh, could be alien alien spirits also the soul chooses the general theme for the life general lessons and the topics to uh, explore the general theme for the first chakra is survival for the development of the second chakra is the trade um, social simple social interactions uh, communications uh, for the third chakra is um, fight domination hierarchy for the fourth chakra love and trust um, and empathy for the fifth chakra is higher levels of communications for the sixth chakra is uh, advanced mental activities and communications with the 
high levels of uh, dimensionality. And for the second, uh, for the seventh chakra, it is these are uh, works related to the communications with God and higher level spirits. Uh, the role of the spirit guides is to guide the life of the soul, guide the life of the person through the for these lessons, and uh, ensure that the lessons are presented to the soul in the proper level and there is uh, help in uh, learning these lessons. The main tools for this um, for this guidance by spirit guides are, are the manipulation of seemingly random processes. What is random for us is not random for the spirit guides so they can arrange uh, the synchronicities, arrange the coincidences and uh, make, make uh, sure the proper uh, help and lessons are presented to the life of the human. Some humans can talk to their spirit guides and it is a great help. Uh, you talk to the spirit guides in meditation and be grateful for them as they are your friends providing the experience and guidance. As the life develops, as uh, you go to, to the new lessons and uh, you complete old lessons and go into new lessons, you might require new expertise, so new spirit guides are brought in. Uh, keep in mind that most of the spirit guides are coming from the past. This would be the discarnate souls of humans who don't have experience in modern life. So their opinions might differ from yours yet they have access to the to much of the spirit knowledge and much of the spirit magic so they could as you complete certain lessons uh, some spirit guides leave you and some spirit, new spirit guides uh, join you the plan of lessons for the life is usually called a contract this contract is not binding and it can be renegotiated the primary principle of this incarnation is free will so the result of your lessons is not predetermined. As you go through lessons, you might uh, obtain a high level of spiritual development and deserve new lessons. So your, your contract might be modified to include new levels. It is very much like a computer game. You start from a lower levels and then expand to uh, higher levels. You start from first chakra survival, go to the second chakra a low, uh, low level of communication, third chakra fight and competition, uh, to the fourth chakra love and compassion, and, and so on. The spirit guides use certain tools to move you through the lesson. The spirit guides use certain tools and tricks to move you through the lessons. When you completed certain lesson and need to go to the next lesson, need to be moved to the next lesson, uh, they send to you subtle messages, like uh, messengers with uh, suggestions. They will make your path difficult, but the new path open for the next lesson. There is a lot of manipulation happening on the spirit side. I imagine uh, the spirit side to be similar to the stock exchange, where people would uh, make deals and exchange opportunities and favor different spirits and angels would help each other to move the subjects in proper directions. It is a complicated network of uh, uh, mutual help. Very often you would uh, stick to familiar uh, area and would move to the new path. You would continue on the closed path and uh, try to do the things as, uh, as you have done before. And be surprised that uh, the path is closed and things go difficult. Um, that could be a signal from the spirit guides that um, it's time to move on to the next path, to the next lesson. So the first method is messages and the second method is blockages. So if blockage, uh, messages and blockages don't help, then um, the spirit guides move to the harder uh, move to the harder methods. Uh, for example, they can send you sicknesses and pains. Usually the third one, the pains are pretty efficient.
Of course, you should realize that uh, not all messages come from spirit guides, not all blockages come from spirit guides, and all, not all pains come from the spirit guides. It is important to learn to differentiate uh, the signals which come from the spirit, from friendly spirits, from uh, other, all other signals in life. So you may want to calibrate your judgment. When you see subtle messages, make a note of them and see what happens if you follow them and, or if you don't follow them and see how they feel and how they smell to you. You will learn to recognize the messages from the spirit guides because if you follow them, uh, everything happens nicely and uh, if you don't follow them, you see that things uh, that you have been warned and things went up, went, went uh, the sour way. So you might want to develop your intuition. This intuition applies to all levels of uh, suggestion by the spirit guides. Um, the first level uh, messages, second level blockages, and the third level pains. Usually the pains uh, sent by the spirit guides are reversible. As, as soon as you uh, stop being stubborn and move to the new path, the pain disappears. I would also advise to develop a network of psychic friends who can give you advice using their intuition and help you um, decipher the messages from the spirit guides. Some people can talk to the spirit guides and ask directly what uh, path would you recommend to go. Understand that the spirit guides can give you only a general advice and often they are prohibited from giving you the answers the solutions to your problem because the key of the lesson is to find a solution yourself so they can only guide you to towards planned lesson a planned lesson and explain that that problem you have to face so the key to solving the problem is facing it realizing that it is a lesson and you have to face it and as i mentioned it is often doesn't it often it doesn't really matter uh, which decision you make it, it matters that you faced the problem and experienced the um, the process of the of making the decision sub chapter higher self in addition to spirit guides you might get advice from uh, your higher self higher self is quite different from the spirit guides the spirit guides are essentially your friends although they give you sometimes a lot of trouble and the higher self is is you it can be defined as future you wiser you or one uh, one of the sides of your own personality while you are playing on the field and you don't know the future the higher self knows the game plan and essentially knows much about the future often your higher self is your past or future incarnation they give you their expertise, personality, and they dominate. They, they are basically the leading of your parallel lives or past and future lives. One of the, le the leading among your past and future lives. It is best version of you. Sometimes, not often, but sometimes, um, one person may have uh, multiple higher selves. Uh, sometimes, uh, one higher self serves for a part of the life and then another higher self moves in and takes charge that is because you reached a certain spiritual level of development level of spiritual development and uh, deserved to get new lessons and new tasks which are better held by a new higher self but they all are part of your own uh, identity part of your own uh, vibration part of your own branch of the tree of life it is helpful to it is helpful to visualize the tree of life shining and made of light and uh, the souls would be little berries on branches of the tree of life your past lives your present life and your future life would be sitting on the same uh, little branch and uh, maybe uh, one would be inserted into another because they are fractally related so one image for the past and future lives is beads on the string and another image would be the uh, spheres which uh, are all uh, have the same center uh, or they are like concentric circles concentric spheres which 
all are enclosed in a bigger one. The biggest of the sphere would be the higher self. Some people are in constant communication with the higher self. It is helpful to speak to him as frequently as you would speak to God because it is the person, the personality, which is most interested in your progress and which is tight, most tightly related to you. And it is you, just the future, the kinder and brighter and uh, stronger version of you. When you are creative, when you feel intuition, when you feel the flow of energy, when you are happy, uh, it is very likely that you are receiving this from your higher self personality. And when you feel disconnected and lost, uh, it is likely that you are you have lost the connection to your higher self. So one of the paths to get connected, to get intuitive, to get in the flow is to meditate, to establish a connection to your higher self. The end of the chapter Reincarnation and Higher Self.